discern how to uh, calculate these vectors from uh, from graphs, you know, position time graphs, the slope of that would give me velocity, the BT graph, the slope of that would give me uh, acceleration, and even the AT graph, there's, there's cases called the uh, jump, uh, that would be the derivative of the acceleration time graph. And you experience jump um, always, like say for instance, if you're on a train or a bus and you're standing up, uh, where you feel it the best, and that infinitesimal lurch forward is a jump. That's a increase in acceleration, then it, then it accelerates, then it comes to a constant speed, and then you come to a stop. So, but that, that time interval is so small that we don't even consider it mostly. Any questions on um, uh, what's gonna be covered? Um, I tend not to, okay, do this problem, because it's gonna be like, I tend to get away from that, but um, the calculus people, the APC mechanics people, will need a little bit of this. Um, for example, um, yeah. so the you AP see your writing, right? Oh yeah, you can't see it. Oh. Okay, let me uh, stop, share, and reshare. This really sucks. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. How about now? Yeah, I think it's working. Okay. Okay, so I, the APC mechanics people, you can flip through your books right now if you want. Um, and there's some sample problems you want to concentrate on. We'll probably talk a little bit about those today. Um, yeah, page 46, number 13. So in all of the problems that you've done, of course, go over them, um, go over your conceptual questions. Uh, tomorrow after school, um, we can go over some select questions or as many as we can in the time that we have. Um, and even some sample problems. How about that? So if you guys can make that, that'd be great. Um, so, yeah, so review uh, Tuesday. Writing's poor, maybe I should use Nelmo, but anyway, enough about that. Um, so, yeah, that's tomorrow and we can review some select problems. So APC mechanics page 46, number 13, uh, numbers 15. Um, I would also take a look at number 47. Got to get here on time, people. All right. So everything else, just for C mechanics, physics one, you don't have to worry about 13, 15, 47. And, um, but uh, mechanics, that's something you want to consider. All right, so hopefully that's the logistics on that stuff. So any questions? All right, so I'm recording this, but your faces are not there. So that's why, you know, I can't see you if you're nodding or anything, I can't see it, um, but just holler at me, send me a private chat. Because uh, just in case some people miss, I'm gonna put this up on my YouTube channel and you guys can uh, go there and like and subscribe. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> access the video there. Uh, um, where are we at? Okay. Uh, so like I said, we're going to, we're now at this 
you can't see this part, but basically around day 16, 17, XT, VT, AT functions and their derivatives or the definition of derivative. And um, we'll, we'll go over some problems in the time we have. Okay, so let's, I'm not gonna do the straight up, you know, definition derivative of f, f of x minus f of a, you know, the slopes, but I'm just gonna do it real clean, hopefully clean for us. All right, so step one in understanding what a derivative is. So let's say, let's say we have a function, a position time function, and um, so position as a function of time. So we have been looking at so far uh, positions as, or displacement as functions of positions, x of x. Now we're going to take our uh, definition of derivative of displacement and look at displacement in terms of position functions as opposed to just uh, points. So we're going to be looking at differences in um, points in time as opposed to just static points in space. Yes. So there's going to be a second test without derivatives for physics one, yes. Because everything, the, the test will be the same except maybe one, one question is gonna be pertaining to APC and one for physics one. You won't have this. Okay, so we have a position as a function of time. And we have been looking at so this is position as a function of time. And we've been looking at position time graphs of uh, forms like this. We've had uh, quadratic equations um, or curves that are actual uh, parts of uh, quadratic equations. And let's say that we have a curve of this form. And let's say that the equation of this curve takes the form of a quadratic like um, x equals 2t squared. Well, if we want to find, let's say, the velocity at any particular point on this on this graph we have to do something to this to this function here um, which is we have, we have to take the slope at each at each point right so we say for example we have a point here a point here and we wish to find out what the position is at that time what the velocity is at that time, what the acceleration may be also at those times, we have so far have been taking uh, slopes to determine what the velocity is at this instance and that instant. Another way that we can do that is in terms of uh, taking the derivative of this function, which is the same thing algebraically as taking the slope at these two points. So in order to take a derivative of a position function, and when you do derivatives, those are actually nicer and neater than just doing slopes and all that, because you're not drawing these arbitrary uh, lines at those points. So we have this function, uh, position as a function of time, and it has the form of a for the constant, which is two in this case, t is time to the nth power, and it represents the exponent. So the second step here is to take this form, express it in, ver in, in, a, in a new variable form as its derivative, and then apply it to this function here. So the second step here, is understanding what the components are, as I mentioned them already. A is a constant. 
yes, we had a question. That's just the form of, of a derivative. So xt equals a t to the n is just a, a math form for the derivative. Or better yet, it's just the form of this equation here. So I need to write it this way so that we can see um, empirically how the derivative works, right? So once we, once we see that, hopefully we'll start to make even more, even more sense. Okay, welcome, Ms. Hernandez. So this is our, um, the form of this equation here. So A represents two, T represents, well, this time, and N is the exponent. Let me just finish writing that. So t is time and n is our exponent. So now, if we want to find a position at that time, any arbitrary time we can, um, before I get to the whole derivative thing. Let's say you have a question, you have this function here, and I want to find what the position is at three seconds. Well, that's quite simple. Um, I guess I can write, write this on the side or below. Uh, let's say. So I want to find find the position. Where are you at t equals three seconds? Very simple. Shall see. So x as a function of time, 2t uh, squared. Now, we want to find it at that moment, so we can just say something like x of 3, because we're trying to find it at t equals 3. Pretty simple. You substitute, right? So 2 times 3 squared gives me 18. At three seconds, I'm at position 18 meters to the east or to the north if I was on the y-axis. Guys following that? Now here's the deal. You found your position at three seconds. Now it's very easy for you to find out what your velocity is at that moment as well. What do we say about average velocity? It's just an it's it's just an estimate of how fast you were going over a period of time. But we also have been talking about instantaneous velocities, even instantaneous accelerations, where you can find out what your velocity will be at any moment of time. That is the power of these position functions, these velocity functions, these acceleration functions. Hence, why we need the derivative. We cannot find out the velocity mathematically from this function here. We can only find its position. As far as velocity, we have to do something to that function. And that brings me to derivative. The next step, you shall appreciate this in calculus if you're not already there, already there. So we've been working with this example. Huh? X of t equals 2t squared. All right. So physics one people, yeah, you're, take notes, um, you know, track with us, but this will not be part of your exam. This will not be part of your AP exam. But um, these are the side notes that I'll be having with, uh, the APC, of course, um, and a little bit of integration down the line. So now the derivative or the slope, basically, is the velocity, which we just denote as d of t. 
We went X of T, now V of T, and then we can even go A of T. Straight up definition of derivative is like your delta X delta T, but in calculus speech or nomenclature, DX DT is the same as what we've seen so far, delta X over delta T. Means the same. Okay, so now what we have to do with derivatives is we have to take that exponent, okay? Remember the exponent was represent, represented by n. We multiply the entire function by n. We still have a, which is two in our case. We have t, but then the exponent that we took from here, this n, we subtract one from it. So you multiply it and subtract by one. So in this case, it would be two minus one. If this was two t cubed, it'd be three minus one. So it'd be three uh, times two t squared. So let me just go and run through that. Um, yeah, so we have our function. Um, And so now the derivative of that would just be change in x for change in time, delta x, delta t, same, same. That would be 2 t, 2 minus 1 is just 1, or 2 t. That should make some sense to you on a geometric level. Maybe not, but again, go all the way here to this position time function. Okay, question. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Isn't it 40? Because A times N is right or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for that. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't have to put my, uh, my, uh, I, wrote, I wrote that wrong. <laughs> okay, let's, let's correct that. So yeah, so I put my two, here and then I have my two of t to the first part. Good call. Um, yeah, I think that was the question that Nicole had. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, go ahead. Is this like the? Is this a function for velocity? No. Yes. This right here, this four t, is the velocity time function. Velocity is a function of time. Yeah, because velocity is the slope slash derivative of position. And so what we've done is we've mathematically uh, calculated that. So now we can find the velocity at any point, right? Absolutely. So now I can find the velocity at three seconds, four times three. I'm moving 12 meters per second at that point, at 18 meters. So this is the power of it. I can track my position and my velocities at each point in time. And then even so, I know that my velocity is increasing over each moment in time. It's getting larger and larger and larger. That means that as my velocity is increasing, it's increasing at a constant rate of four meters per second squared, which we'll, which we'll just do. Um, so yeah, what I was saying before is that we go from quadratic functions, curves, to lines, to constants. This 2t squared is quadratic. This 4t is linear. And then the next thing we'll have is a constant number four. So you can see the power of what I was saying before, hopefully, that slopes trail down. You go from position time to velocity time to acceleration time by slopes, and then you go backwards. So if you go backwards from acceleration all the way up, it'd be four to 4t to 2t squared by taking what is called an integral or areas under the curve. So, um, so yeah, so now, my velocity at three seconds would just be four times three. Positive, everything fits, it's going to the east. I'm at 18 meters, meters to the east, et cetera. Why not extend it, right? So now 
we know. We already know by all those motion graphs that we've done that uh, the velocity is increasing and that there is an acceleration. Anytime you have a dramatic increase in position, as you have with this quadratic, you can instantly know, see that there's an acceleration that's going to happen. If x of t was linear, then you know that you're going to have a constant velocity with no acceleration. Then if you have a cubic function, well, that's kind of unphysical. You can do it mathematically, but that would be the case of the jump or the jerk that you feel on a, on a train or a bus. Physical in a very small time interval. Uh, we don't normally or experience that on a regular basis. So, but it, it does exist. There are cubic functions of position. Um, so, like I said, acceleration, uh, what I say is the slope of a slope slash derivative. Since now we're treating that formally. of a velocity time graph. Uh, so now, A is delta B, delta T, which is the same as a DV a DT. Taking the logic of derivative, which we take the exponent of time, which is one, right? We have one here, four, and then we have T one minus one, which is zero t to the zero power, any uh, variable to the zero is just one, that becomes four. So you're accelerating at a constant rate of four meters per second squared. It is a straight line. Like I said before, um, velocity as a function of time is like that. Acceleration as a function of time would be like that. So curve to line to constant derivative, the slope we've seen already, it's graphs. Now we're proving that mathematically. Any questions um, on the basic definition of derivative? So now we can just play around with it. We can let's do a couple of examples, right? Will we always work with uh, quadratic position graphs? Mostly, yes. I mean, I say 99%, yeah. Okay. Because it's just, like I said, it's almost um, in physics, uh, the, the cubic function is, doesn't really come up a lot. Um, so let's say, like I said before, let's see if we can just, yell at each other here. So find the, uh, let's see, this is function of time. Uh, for so take a couple of minutes to uh, wrestle that guy. Again, we can find position, oh, I can give you the time. Um, T equals four. And let's say it's uh, initial time is four. Um, uh, nine. Yep. Okay. So find uh, those functions at each of those. I don't want to say two right now, but we can do that later. At t initial four seconds and t final seven. So I'll let you guys um, just, uh, do that for a couple of minutes and we'll come back. Mr. Kelly. 
Can I ask you a question on the packet while the physics C people are doing this doing with the question you just asked? Yes, real yes, quick? yes. No problem. So the, the question with the marble, does that use like derivatives with what you're explaining right now? Or is no, no, there no. another way? Yeah, you can just use the kinematics equations. Um, can, you, can you explain that after class more in detail? Because I'm yeah. kind of confused on that. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's all right. Still need more time or? So there's a complicated definition of derivative and then there's hopefully easy version. <laughs> But it's good to know it in its explicitness uh, when you get to calculus, so you can have even greater appreciation for it. All good. Let's check to see what we got. So we want to find the uh, positions at those at those moments. I say the best thing you want to do in these problems is think, imagine what's going on with this car, or this object. It's it's a cubic function here, but it's dramatically increasing. You know, the cubic is even more you know shifted inside, and the quadratic. So there's a dramatic uh, action happening. Um, so x at four, the position at four seconds. Four to the cubic power, what is that? 16 times. Is that 48? Can't multiply anymore. I can do derivatives. Like um, pardon me a second. I find that very hilarious that the more advanced math she do, get simple multiplication. Yeah, 64 times nine. Um, 576, so we're all good there. That's the position at four seconds. Any questions? Likewise, at seven, um, yeah, nine, seven cubed, three thousand eighty seven meters. Hopefully, everybody is okay with that. If there's no questions, I will hear silence if have them ask away. Not be shy. All right, that's better. Cool. Let's go on with velocity at those moments. Instantaneous velocities, right? We were talking about them, the slope, the arbitrary line that we're going to draw. Then we'll take the slope of the points at the top, points at the bottom. Well, we can do it very fast just by doing derivatives. And we can get more exact answer. Um, so I have a position here. Now I have to take the slope slash the derivative of that function to give me a velocity as a function of time. And I can find the velocities at any moment in time, okay? just like we did. So that means I take the derivative of the rate of change of position, okay, dx dt. You're going to really love it when you have things like this. Don't mind that. 
partial derivatives. Uh, let's see. That's going to be three times nine, three minus one. Nine T squared, huh? That will be 27 T squared. So that's my funky velocity function, right? So my position function is cubic, although we can't do this because time's not negative, cubic. This is nine T cubed. And then velocity is quadratic. Then what will acceleration be, Rita? What kind of geometry will acceleration have? Linear. Absolutely right. We go from three to two to one. And then we go from quadratic, we go two, one, zero. Squared, one line, zero constant, no exponent. Four, three, two. You can, you can carry the monomials all the way, however. So it's really a matter of getting the basics and now you can start expanding out. So velocity at three, did I say four? Oh. Velocity at four. <clears throat> It's 27 times four squared, so it's 27 times 16. Da -da. 432 meters per second. What in the world is this object? How is it going 432 meters per second at four seconds? What what kind of physics is this? What is what what is this object? This is a crazy object. Is this a bullet? <clears throat> right. So velocity at uh, seven seconds, 27, 49, 27, syntax error, okay, yeah. 13, 23 meters per second, any questions? That easy? And therefore, we will have acceleration function of time is linear. That makes sense. We will have a next example on another slide coming up. So now we take the velocity function and we take the derivative of that. Two times 27 T, so 54 T. This is linear, like MX, uh, 54 T. Line, slope will be the jump, J versus T, meters per second cubed which should make some sense to you because we started off with a cubic function. So it all is pattern-based, all of this stuff. Fifty-four times four. Acceleration at four seconds. 216 meters per second squared, and at seven second mark. Three hundred and seventy eight. This problem is similar in concept to the APC people uh, to number the last number, number I gave you, I think. Um, 47, because now number 47, what you're going to be doing is you're going to derive, 
you're going to be deriving the kinematics equations in terms of this new uh, jerk or jump um, uh, factor. Uh, it's another vector that comes after acceleration. So it's a fourth or a third derivative of position, if you will. Because um, uh, as we can see here, that velocity is the first derivative of position. The acceleration will be the second derivative because we've taken another derivative. So if we want to express acceleration in terms of derivative uh, of position, we would have acceleration would be d squared x dt squared. That just means the second derivative of position. You guys tracking that? That's what we did. We took one derivative for velocity and then the second one for acceleration. And then if we did a third for like number 47, it would be d cubed x dt cubed. But that's, again, that's, we can take as many derivatives as we want. We can take 99, it's just, but that, that's the liberty that you have in math, but in physics, we have to be uh, realistic. We're not gonna have 99 derivatives, that's not, it's not physical. Are you guys following that? Any questions? You see, Hopefully you see this all right, which will help us for the next example. If you have your books there, turn to page 25. Because now we're going to look at the example at the top of page 25, which is Example 2.3, where, where we're trying to find average and instantaneous velocities. Going on to that slide now, we have this graph. And position versus time. The red represents the position, the blues, the velocities. As we can see, velocities at these instances will be increasing in a negative direction. That's why this blue line for velocity is gonna be increasing in the negative direction. And then conversely here, the velocities are gonna be increasing if we take moment, 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 slope, 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 or we can do an average. So there's a couple of approaches here uh, that we uh, can do. Okay, what page is this on again? Page 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. First example. Um, so the first question was from this, let me get on my uh, verbiage here. Um, so we have X. So, so again, we're going to be taking a position time function. It's not going to be as easy as the last one we had. So x of t is going to be negative 4t plus 2t squared. Obviously, this graph describes this red, negative 4t plus 2t squared. Uh, Ax positive, because it's an upward curve, and then uh, bx and no c. Because um, c really is the intercept, and so it goes through the origin. That's why no c. Um, Let's, let's dissect it, huh? We want to find the displacement from A to B. Um, hmm, how should I write this? A is at zero. B is like between two and three. And D is there. A couple of approaches. Probably I can see it. You guys are tracking. You guys are very good. You're getting it. Uh, at least I hope so. Right. So now we want to find the displacement from A to B, which is T equals zero to T equals one second. Let's try two different ways of doing that and verify 
that they are the same, and they should be because the displacement won't change for any method that we choose, provided that the method is correct. Let's take the easy route first. Can someone tell me? Well, you can see it there. But do you see why we can just take a straight up displacement? Namely, since we're all looking at the same example, uh, the first way we can take the displacement is like the old school way x final minus x initial. Final position is minus two here and initial. Very nice. That means what? Sin. What does minus two meters mean? It's two meters far from the origin in the opposite in negative direction. And negative direction uh, physically, what? That means I'm going to the east or west? West. Yes. Perfect. Now we're just on the horizontal axis. We got this car, whatever it is, this particle. Probably one of those particles at the CERN laboratory. Uh, you guys got the joke. Uh, or two meters to the west. Crickets. Okay. Um, now let's f see what we find with the position function itself. Like, you know, the whole business of the before. Uh, so, secondly, so, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, we're now going to find the displacement as a function of time. So we want to get the positions at each of those times and subtract. It's the same business as in number one. We're now finding it as a function of time as, a, as opposed to positions. So in effect, I could write this here as delta x of x. Not necessary. But hopefully you can get some appreciation for the fact that there's position and time here. Space, time, right? You heard of that? Bear with me as I go on my tangents. I'm trying not to get too much off topic. Um, so, X is a function of time here. Uh, before we had X as a function of position, the old school way. And then I can just go ahead and do this. Final time and it's initial time basically. So, hmm. Uh, you guys tracking this? Couple of yeses, couple of noes? Yeah, I'm good. All right, Joy, I know, I know you're tracking um hey all right so delta x t the same thing as saying delta x how to write this um t final uh no not delta x come on eraser this x right Um, minus x t initial. X is a function of time final. X is a function of time initial. So we put the entire function and those times in the final case and subtract from the initial case and we will get the same thing. So we have uh, let's see add it up get before negative for uh, plus two times one squared four times zero plus two times zero squared. That's nothing. So negative four plus two. Look at that. Up, huh? you find the old school way, and 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 it. It's not like okay, which way do we use or. 
which way is preferable, whatever, um, you know you have two different options because points and as functions of time, one second, zero seconds. Nothing changes, you still had the same displacement, meters to the west. Two meters to the west. Um, so likewise, continue on, I guess. Um, so that was from A to B, and then we can go from uh, B to D. Um, and maybe give you some breakout room problems. Or... <clears throat> Yeah, so same same business. Pardon me as I scroll up, you, you guys have. So points and uh, positions function of time. Yep. So at position uh, D, uh, six minus, minus two, no? and that's plus eight. We have traveled eight meters to the east. A lot of times, uh, a lot of kids uh, will say six minus two because it's negative two down there. Yeah, you, you still get four, but in some cases you're gonna get, an, uh, say a negative number or a positive number when it should be going negative. So make sure that this is the, the entire position. You're saying here that this is two meters. At this point in time, I'm two meters to the west. So I have to subtract the entire um, expression and not just six minus two. You guys have been doing that. So that means I'm going eight meters east. All right. He just fell out coming back. Welcome back, Julius. Delta X as a function of time, uh, just like we did last time. Nothing new here. And four times three plus two times three is red. And once you get this, you can take any function. I can give you t to the 100th power or something. You know, it's... The thing with physics, you get the basic concept and you can expand it everywhere, right? It doesn't matter what style of problem or how long it is, the concept is the same. Sometimes you, it's hard to track it. And I, and I got that, that was a good problem to call number 30 for example, from the homework is a good, a good um, um, extension of concepts that um, if people want to talk about that later. Uh, so this is negative 12 plus 18. Subtract negative 4 plus two, this is going to be six minus, minus two. Look at that, All right? So you have two options, the position function here and just uh, dis displacement as a function of time. And likewise, this second uh, example, we're to calculate the average velocity during the two time intervals. We can do it the old school velocity way, and we could do it the position function way. Same logic, and the, and the same thing goes for um, your average acceleration. So, part B. Going B to A, or A to B, but make this um, 
b minus a, right? Uh, <clears throat> delta x over delta t. We already have our delta x from before. We know it's a uh, one second time interval, negative two meters per second. Two meters per second to the west. We're going west. Velocity's west. That tells us right away that we, if we're going west and the velocity is also west, um, increasing, what's happening to my car? Am I accelerating or decelerating? Accelerating. Absolutely right. Thank you, Joya. Yep. You are accelerating. You are increasing your velocity in the negative direction, increasing your velocity towards the west. The slope is there, it's apparent. We can take the slope of that, it's gonna be a negative number. Constant. Ah, actually for that slope here, uh, uh, I got ahead of myself. No, the con it, it, it'll be constant, but it, it, it won't be increasing. Yeah, there's an increase in velocity. Yeah. So constant rate of acceleration. Um, so average velocity, that's going to be like D minus B. So we're going from B to D, but delta X over delta T. We know that from uh, B to D, we traveled um, eight meters as we calculated here. And the time interval was two seconds, four meters per second. And I can leave this as a, a general exercise uh, for you um, just to prove yourself. Um, I guess we can go ahead and do that. Our, ourselves and I give you a breakout room problem real quick. So that's the old school way and now the new school. Right, we do the position functions. Uh, so we have a negative, I gotta write my position function by myself. Okay, so x is 4t plus 2t squared. And so I have negative 4, and that's from a to b, so times 1, right? 2 times uh, 1 squared. Ah. Well, again, that's, you know, we're just repeating really. And then this is minus two. And we know the time interval is one second. So negative four plus two is negative two over one. Same, same. So it just depends on the situation, but you will have uh, two options. And then average velocity again from, uh, well, it's going from B to D or D minus B. Uh, negative four times three plus two times three squared. Uh, What's that? One second. Is that, is that one? over two. So, so that's gonna be negative six again, negative two, or no, just positive six, sorry. So that's uh, negative 12 uh, plus 18, 18 minus 12, and then um, all over two uh, plus eight. So I hope you can see that all right. Any questions, issues, comments? So four minutes per second.
two, negative two here, negative four, old school, new school, same thing, because we're doing the same thing. We're just finding it from a different point of view. And that's beauty of physics. You can do it multiple different ways. So now, you can even, you know, go on further. I don't think they do that, but yeah, find a, we can find the acceleration if we want, but I, I think we get the picture. So let me go back and before I break you out. The thing you need to know for derivatives. Take a function. Uh, multiply the function by the exponent. Exponents here, this is the constant, this was the time, and then you subtract right there. And that's what we did to get our velocities, our uh, accelerations, uh, our position functions, uh, velocity functions, uh, acceleration functions. So this, this is the important issue here. So I'm gonna have you now go to your breakout rooms and apply some of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, as I said before, delta x over delta t is dx dt. But delta x delta t is not the same as say partial derivative of delta x delta t. That's way, way, way down the road for you guys. But um, we will get there. Or you'll definitely get there this year when at the end, when I start introducing quantum mechanics. When we're done with the AP exam, like a nice little project. So pretty ambitious. So I might even derive the entire hydrogen wave function for you. I'll go through step by step. I will explain every bit of the math. I know it sounds strange, even those words, but I think you'll appreciate it. Because that, that analysis there, what I will do there is to have you see just about every part of the hydrogen atom everything we can do with it uh, via quantum mechanics, but that's way down the road. Um, all right, all right, where was I? You guys good? Any questions? You still there? <laughs> You guys okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're I mean, good. <laughs> all right. Well, I was just trying to get the reply. I, I can't. I can't see you. Like I said, I'm recording. I don't want. I don't want you know people making memes out of your faces. <clears throat> Something like that. Uh, okay. So let's get to a breakout room. <clears throat> The, well, uh, physics C people uh, in particular want you to do um, page 46, number 13. Um, as well as number 15. All righty, so let me send you out. And we got a question. Oh yeah, absolutely. If anybody wants to stay back and ask questions while certain people, the APC people go, well, I, I would prefer, if you have additional questions here in, in your, Nicole, you're part of it, I would prefer you go to the breakout room and then um, after class we can, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so, 
see there's like um, <clears throat> All right, see you in about 10 minutes. Um, so Mr. Kelly, um, yes, I'm sir. just physics one. So should I even enter the breakout room? Because none of this applies to me. No, you don't have to. Like I said, you're, you're, you're just kind of like sitting back as a interloper right now. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like listening and then like, cause right now I'm in pre-calculus and a yeah. lot of the things you're saying, I haven't even learned about yet. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trudging along. Yeah, like, okay. I, like I said, you're, you're good, so. So yeah, so on, on the test on Thursday, yeah. it'll be on the, I, I'm totally blanking right now, the, like like these equations, the. Yeah, like the, the kinematic the, equation. The, 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 the kinematics. So it'll be kinematics, um, velocity, time, acceleration. So velocity, time, acceleration, time, distance, time graphs, like kind of translating those, right? Yeah, um, yeah. What else will be on it? Is that um, what's on top? For, for pretty, physics one. That, yeah, exactly. It's pretty much pretty much it. Okay. Let me just look at the test real quick and I can be more articulate about it. Um, I just want to cover all my bases. Yes, yes. Uh, Five week exam. Yeah, that was a real funky one for the C people, but um, uh, okay. Uh, just to be simple. Uh, I would just go over the packets. Both packets? Yeah, just, just be aware of both packets and just go over your homework questions. You should be fine. Okay. Yeah, as long as you, you know, you answer those okay. Not the conceptual questions, but the, just the homework problem. So, so the question about like the motors and so question 30, will that be on the physics one? Because that was super. Yeah, even Nicole came back in there. Actually, uh, no, for physics one, no. Both, okay. For both classes, won't be what was that, sir? For both classes, it will not. Okay. 